Алло, слышно что-нибудь? Да. А, хорошо. А меня слышно? Нормально? Да, да, вроде нормально. Ну, хорошо. Это главное. Да. А вот сейчас извиняюсь. слышно не так хорошо. Поэтому что-то какое-то была помеха какая-то. Ну, как если бы интернет был медленный. Ну, не знаю, что делать. Нет, ну, конечно, это самое. Южная Америка далеко, тут уж ничего не поделаешь. Байды теряются по дороге. Сейчас я попробую что-нибудь... Да. Так. И, упс, что это я делаю не то. Не, вот про, про потерянные байты и, 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 мне рассказывали разные истории китайские э, товарищи, но, наверное, под запись я это не буду пересказывать. Нет, да, я вам не расскажу анекдот, потому что он неприличный. Да, именно так. А эта самая доска, она сама по себе тоже доступна или нет? Ну, доступна, да. Эм... Только сейчас, значит, мне нужно так сделать. И... Вот Можно, так. на самом деле, сделать некоторую доску для семинара постоянной? А, и чтобы... Всегда ее открывать. Ну, это какое-то, по-моему, излишнее действие. Нет. Это очень правильное действие, потому что так удобнее выкладывать все доски. И, и, и собственно, она уже есть, просто ей никто не пользуется. Ну, доски... Ну, тогда они с другой стороны стирают. Точно никто не будет читать. Постойте, постойте. Когда одна доска использована, можно тут же переходить к другой, в той же самой директории, которая доступна всем. Нет, я имею в виду, что кто-то реально будет читать эти доски? Не знаю. Вот это я не берусь сказать. У меня да, сомнения. Это самое. И где же... А, вот, вот доска, да? Да, да, да. Вот сейчас я... Да, вот попробую. уже... Сейчас я попробую. Можно ли что-нибудь туда написать? Да, но я это все удалю. Хорошо. Ну чего? Да, да. Ну что, начинать? Не знаю. Можно начинать, наверное. Да. Так, да, значит, только... ну, я начну, я наверное. Наверное, по-английски все равно, потому что запись будет, может, кто-то захочет послушать, если нет возражений. Uh, names on the screen uh, who is who so uh, sorry sorry for this stupid discussion yeah no no, no. i actually wanted to speak in english so, but your as we english have is perfect, now, so... I, I guess. 
Yes. <laughs> but okay, let's let's tr try to start. So, uh, okay. So for context, I would like to. What what I would like to do? I would like to remind you the what, one possible definition of the class PP. Uh, so the idea of PP. So we have okay, we have in P where uh, there is um, uh, there is a not, like um, when we are looking whether there is a like one at least one certificate for something to be in the language. And then there is uh, just you know Sharpie where you just want to compute the number of uh, certificates. Then there okay so there is an P. There is a Sharpie where you want to compute the number of certificates. And then uh, for example there is a I don't know how it's called O plus P where you want to compute the parity of the number of certificates. So like the least significant bit of the number of certificates. And so PP is like the same, but not, oh, okay, it's just the, the most significant bit you want to compute of the number of uh, certificates. Well, so, uh, so how you can define it? So you have, okay, one possible way is you have a language and then this language belongs to PP. Uh, if there is if, a polynomial time predicate with two parameters, yeah. Yeah, if there is a, um, okay, yeah. So like some, maybe it's easier to say with probabilistic Turing machines, it doesn't really matter. If there is a probabilistic Turing machine and like, and we ask, well, this is just to avoid some additional notation. So the randomness bits of this Turing machine will be like, have, we'll have a meeting of the meaning of certif uh, certificate. So we have a probabilistic Turing machine M such that for all X, X is in the language if and only if the number, well, so okay, the fraction of certificates Okay, the, or the probability that m of x equals one is at least one half. So yeah. So this is PP. So it's just like BPP but without bound. So it's yeah. Deleted, that's PP, and it's 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 if I remember correctly, this is pretty pretty robust. So for example, if we put one third, or if we just say that the probability of one machine is bigger than probability of another machine it's still the same because we can yeah. adjust the number of uh, somehow uh, add uh, something to, to, to balance things <clears throat> yes we can, I, I don't know if you want one third i guess you need uh some like a machine with probability which with probability to third does something uh, or i mean or in the other way, like with uh, and with probability one third runs this machine. So the reduction from one half to one third, let's say, will be like that. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, if, so if, now, does anybody know? Uh, does everybody is acquainted with this? We do, or we need to discuss it more in more details. Just it's a kind of. Mm, a bit technical language with not very philosophical meaning. Very philosophical. No. Okay, let, 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 let's continue. Yeah, so what next I wanted to discuss is complete problems. So uh, for this thing, so uh, and, and like, uh, so I gradually moving to the result. So uh, one example, so what uh, like, an uh, this is, one complete problem is majority circuit SAT. So, well, the idea is that you have a circuit and then yet you want to say yes if, uh, if the number of satisfying assignment 
Okay, I don't know the num uh, the number of x such that c of x is one is at least half and zero otherwise. And so there is like over n variables. So we are given a circuit and we want to decide whether um, <clears throat> whether um, the number of satisfying assignments is at least half uh, uh, is at least half of the number of all assignments. And on one hand, this is obviously belongs to PP because we can just take a Turing machine that runs our circuit on a random input. Uh, and on the other way, on the other, on the other hand, the, the, you know this all standard cookie Levin reduction. When you have a, if you have a probabilistic Turing machine, and then an input to it, and it and it also has some random bits R, you construct a circuit that stimulates uh, the run of M on X and R. And you uh, you hardwire access into that, and then you obtain a circuit over R's, and then the probability that M of X equals one is at least one half, if and only if the number of satisfying assignments to at least half of the uh, of the assignments to the circuit are satisfying. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, maybe worth noting that. Uh, in in he, here we have a complete language and for bpp we don't we don't have because for bpp there is a special requirement for gap and now we don't have don't have this requirement so we get the complete language immediately without yeah so i don't know if there are some questions about that so what i suppose that i explained suppose that i explained the definition of the problem and why it's pp complete so if there are any questions here I think it's clear. Yeah. It's clear. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, the, in the next step, there is one non standard thing happening. Uh, namely, um, and, and namely, now, okay. So, like in the usual NP complete uh, theory, in the usual NP completeness stuff. So what the next step is that from uh, complex uh, from uh, hardness of circuits up, uh, we deduce the hardness of uh, the free CNF problem, uh, such as free, uh, to the hardness of free sub. And what is the reduction? The reduction is uh, that just if I have a circuit, let's say some Boolean gate, I just introduce a new variable uh, which corresponds to that circuit. And I do that for every gate of the circuit. And then I just write for every gate a free CNF, which encodes that uh, you know the computation in that gate uh, goes as, uh, as it's supposed to. Yeah, so, but if, we, so, if we have the existing quantifiers, then the new variables are, are, are uh, not useful and uh, they don't create problems. But now, uh, uh, since most, if we take the new variables randomly, of course, most pro uh, with high probability, they will not satisfy things. So this, this, this standard yeah. doesn't work anymore. <clears throat> and so this shows that we can consider the same problem for like ma majority free sat problem. So you have a free CNF and you want to know if, most, if at least half of the assignments are satisfying. But, you know, this thing is not, uh, so this is not a reduction. This is not the correct reduction to that problem. Uh, and in fact, it was like unknown whether this problem is hard, is, is it PP complete, or maybe it's NP complete or something. So, uh, but yeah, so the, and the problem is that uh, we start from circuit sat and one half, and now 
in, in the resulting result, there are many, uh, like there are M variables, M new, I don't know, there are M new variables. Then uh, if the initial circuit, the number of satisfy, the fraction of satisfying assignment was at least half, then in the resulting result will be at least two to the minus M half, right? Because for any fixation of old variables, there is just one fixation of new variables that uh, achieves, which satisfies the resulting circuit. So if we had one half, now for each of this one half, there will be just two to the minus M probability. So you are now explaining what? That it's reducible or not reducible? Just the general, general plan. What is what you are saying now? Ah, okay. So what I want to explain. So first, first, yeah, what, so what we already understood explain... that the standard reduction to, to three sat with with normal variables does with additional variables. The auxiliary variables doesn't work because uh, the fraction is now different. And now yeah. you explain okay, so... that if you allow for the new variables, you allow another threshold. It's then the reduction works, yeah, or, or not? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, let's. Okay, uh, uh, I will explain now that uh, majority sat. So we're the same problem, but there is no restriction that every clause has three variables, just arbitrary number of variables. Is PP complete? Yeah, so when you say majority sub, you, you assume formulas. And if, if those are so- uh, By majority CNF sub. Uh, majority. majority. So this problem that I'm now explaining is that I have a CNF and it's not necessarily a free CNF, but an arbitrary CNF. And I want to know whether the number of satisfying, uh, whether at least half of the satisfying assignment is, are satisfying. Well, okay. At least half of the assignments are satisfying. Yeah. And here it's very important that the threshold is one half, because if you have the smaller threshold, you get more things. That's what you are saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah. if, if you allow a threshold to be not some constant, well, if, if you allow to, it to be, like, 2 to the minus something, which is also a part of the input, then even majority 3 CNF sat is PP complete. But if you want it to be one half, then, and you want to be PP complete, you have to allow... Uh, so like if the you width allow longer, the longer closes, then somehow you yeah. can still deal with the majority, uh, with the uh, threshold one half. So is there anybody in the audience who understands why it's the case? Or no? Yeah, and if there are any questions about the statements, uh, because it was somehow chaotic, but... So the statement... That's, that's, there is some sound sound problem. So the statement is that for uh, majority uh, CNF uh, satisfiability uh, with threshold yeah. one half, it's still this problem is still in PP complete. Uh, so the statement is clear, I guess, but the proof is not. But maybe okay, so one else, the proof is clear, no? No, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Maybe it's a different, difficult problem, but. Yeah, let me say in one sentence uh, how we are going to prove it. Well, I mean, maybe we won't even dig into all details, but the idea is that the first thing, so we can consider this reduction from circuit sat to free CNF sat. That doesn't work for one half, but it works for some small threshold, which is of the form two to the minus M something. And then the idea is just to do something, uh, just to leave this threshold to one half. 
But then we have to add something to our CNF and we will have to add uh, something with long clauses. So that's the idea. Yeah, so because, somehow, well, we will have to add something with clauses because we like the gap, we will, uh, there is like a very small uh, gap. So it's like two to the, we, uh, we, uh, we have to take into the account that like the probability can be uh, because there is no gap between like the case it's the not positive so clear case why uh, we can uh, mm, mm, uh, why we can grow up this gap because uh, uh, there is no gap. What is the, the, what is the threshold? Threshold, okay. So, uh, yeah, so let's discuss what is the threshold. So, the threshold is in one case, it should be at least two to the minus m one half. So, basically, it's two to the minus m plus one. In the other case, when the initial circuit has like less than half of the satisfying assignments. So the probability will be like now it will be one half minus some uh, power of two, two to the minus 10. So like the difference will be some power of two between the cases. No, I am lost. So Misha, is it clear how you reduce to three sat? with a small with this new threshold this is clear and the question sure. is how to then change this threshold to one half by uh, uh, the price is we, we have no more three sat but some more complicated formula as i see uh not very complicated by just cnf uh, arbitrary so we you use clauses with uh, many literals yeah, but, but so, so the first part is clear, and now we're explaining the second part, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so you, you need to combine co co somehow to divide the probability space into two parts. In one part, we have the previous formula, and in one part, we have something carefully chosen, yeah? Yes. And so division into halves is... Uh, and these halves are independent. No. Okay. Well, Sasha, Shane, do you have you want to tell a proof? Or? No, I, I no, I I, I I want to have a plan for a proof, but I don't know whether it's true or not. So imagine we have our probability space here, and uh, we want to divide it into two halves, and here we have something which is either greater or not greater than two to the minus m over two. And then yeah. in the second half, we need to add something just mm, a bit, a bit small. No, 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 I, I, I'm wrong. Just a bit smaller than, uh, than the entire what? thing. Uh, so uh, if we add this, 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 this half uh, here, it becomes uh, just one half. And this some, some yeah. fixed, and so, so we, we, we had variables x1 or xn somehow, and now we have this new variable which is responsible for, for this new, new division, yeah? Yeah, I mean, but we will have more than just one new variable. Right, right because okay. in the second half we will have some other variables. Ah, so we need some other variables, probably m plus something of them. Yeah. So, so yeah so yeah exactly so like yeah so the idea is like that and for example how can you realize it so i have my like old cnf if this threshold two to the minus m uh, yeah with some number of variables and then i would i don't know let's just take a disjunction with some carefully chosen new cnf 
c hat over new variables but the junction of two cnf uh is not a cnf yeah but you can so okay so that's that's a oh, question i see i see you you, you, you yeah. then transform it and uh, the size is uh yeah it's like, the size goes quadrat quadratically so the idea is that so okay cnf is a disjunction or, or conjunction of clauses and i have let's say another cnf and i can write it as just A1 and B1, A2, A1 and B2, and so on. So like the like the sum in the product. Okay, yeah. And then <clears throat> so now uh, we have our threshold. So now what's the probability? Well, okay, so the number of the fraction of satisfying assignment can be seen as the probability that this thing is satisfied if you take an assignment in random. So what it will be? So if this C hat has some probability alpha of being one, then the total probability of this disjunction is what? Is uh, P plus alpha minus alpha P. Right? Uh, yeah, and then the idea is that we want to make it uh, like at least one half when P is uh, at least two to the minus M half and less than one half when P is smaller. Oh, so, so you, you, you don't want, uh, you, you want, I wanted to split it into two parts and have different things in different parts. Uh, but you somehow try to take just a disjunction and the price is you have this minus alpha P story, which will now create some fraction, which is not binary and but probably it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, the idea is that uh, I can construct a CNF uh, like well, I have to find some alpha and the precision is like exponential two to the minus M something has to be right. Because if P is at least two to the minus M half, it's at least two, two to the minus M half, but if it's smaller, then it's actually smaller by some two to the minus N also. So we have to find, uh, so we will obtain some alpha, uh, well, ideally, we would want to solve like uh, this equation exactly so that when P is put to the minus M, alpha is, uh, gives us exactly one half, but might be not, I don't know, not uh, not the exactly like some no, binary. But why, 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 why don't you do simpler things like, like a, maybe there is some problem. So I just wanted to write that. Uh, y zero and c of x one x n, or uh, y is one and uh, some d of y one y n, where d is chosen in a in a in a way to create a, a right probability, and then we don't have don't have the problems of adjusting things because we are all in the integer of, integer multiples of two to the minus n, to the minus n. Ah, okay, yeah, so then we can do it. Stuff. But then the idea is that to create this D, we need uh, large clauses. Of size M, more or less, yeah? Yeah. Or M plus one or something like this. Yes. So I didn't want to go into much detail here so like the to give you the idea how we show that majority cnfs are this pp complete and then we have to use large clauses yeah yeah but but th this looks to be there there, there is that's it doesn't seem there are some technical details missing so it's more or less complete so if if there are some questions uh, i can i think we can just look at them now 
Is yeah, the, the only question that we didn't discuss is that if you okay, if you want, um, so you want uh, some to construct some CNF such that the, the fraction of satisfying assignment is of the form A to the like this A two to the M, right? No, it's just I think one min minus two to the m plus 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 two or something like this. No. Ah, yeah. Which is just we make one close, which cuts away the, this part of of the space. So the space. So yeah. So then yeah, indeed. So it will be then that if you take this, the probability will be what? So like one half times two to the minus m minus one plus one half one minus in one half, plus. In, well, one half we have something small and the other half we have some uh, almost one minus some threshold so it's yeah yeah that but the maybe there you should have just two to the minus m here right so i'll maybe two or minus maybe plus m. one i don't know but in, in, yeah, yeah yeah and to create the cnf like that you just take some M variables or M plus one variables, yeah. which is just one with probability well, one with probability one minus the number of variables. Yeah, great. So, uh, uh, for example, uh, Georgi, is it, is it clear? Uh, just say if if because it's simple thing it, it, if it's not clear it's our fault yes i think it's okay yeah yeah but then you should encourage uh, the, the speaker to go forward otherwise i will stop him all the time so it's not a good thing okay yeah so to go uh okay let's go forward and so the main thing that i want to talk is that actually it turns out that if this majority free set is polynomial time solvable actually and, and majority four set is polynomial time solvable yeah and the theorem okay the theorem is uh by akmal and williams so for for, for every k and uh for every rational row between zero and one there exists a polynomial time algorithm which depends on k and row so uh, such that uh, given a cnf Uh, a k c n f c it decides let's say over n variables whether uh, the number of satisfying assignments to c is at least rho times two to the n. So but does it mean that if we, is, if, uh, it implies probably that we can just compute the fraction with any given precision? Oh no, even more, no, it's much more. If we have a, a threshold, we can compute with very high precision, but only near the threshold somehow. Well, oh, I mean, because, but the, the problem uh, is that we compute uh, the complexity depends on raw and very badly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but if you want uh, to compute probability with precision, I don't know, 0 0.01, then we take all all rows, uh, uh, all thresholds, and there are finitely many of them, so it's polynomial task. Right. So, right. Yes. How does it depend on rho? What is the time? How does it depend on rho? 
Well, I don't know. The larger like, some exponents, I don't know. Exponent of what? Probably the denominator well, of rho is important. Number of exponents. So okay, the easy question, I don't know. There is some function of rho. The easy answer. Uh, and this theorem implies that uh, majority three sat uh, is polynomial, yes? Yeah, for yes. k equals to three and rho equals yeah. to it one seems half, that I guess. That, yeah, it's just, a, just the case where k is three and rho is one half. Mm. Yeah. And if we want uh, to compute... Uh, just the, if we want to compute the fraction uh, with with some uh, 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 given precision, uh, do, does it give some interesting algorithm, or, or it's just for 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 threshold? We have a given precision. No. Okay. So so or just, just the question is: we have precision. a formula with n variables. A CNF formula with n variable, three CNF formula with n variables, and we want to compute the satisfier probability with precision, at, I don't know, two to the minus k. Do we know something about complexity of this task? I don't know. Yeah, okay. So this algorithm doesn't, doesn't provide something like this. Good. Uh, well, yeah. I, I'm not sure whether it provides or not. So, okay. So let let's consider it's some simple case. Uh, for example, majority for three sat. Yeah. Yeah. Let's even start for majority for two sat. Okay, it's even better. So you have now a two CNF, And you want to know whether the, the satisfying probability is at least some row. Well, actually, okay, one half. You can think of one half. So, okay, let me. So, it, so what it's now I'm proving that this theorem for the case k equals two. Okay, so, and I'm giving the algorithm. The algorithm is the following. Uh, so, first, okay, I have some clauses. I want to take some maximal uh, wearable disjoint okay let, let's just think a bit so each closes uh, there is a conjunction of closes so we take uh, each closes cuts away one fourth Or, or one half, but if it's one half, probably there is nothing to, to do. It's clear that we have small probability. But uh, each, each, each cut cuts one fourth. But then these things for different variables somehow combine in a very complicated way. So yeah. if they are independent, we cut one fourth and then one fourth of one fourth, so it's uh, three fourths squared. But if yes. they are not independent, something happens and who knows what? Yeah, so indeed, so if you have like a, a lot of clauses that do not share variables, I don't know, X and not Y, uh, Z or T and so on, I don't know, A and B. Then we know that, okay, so what we can say, for example, in this case, in this case, we can say that the satisfying probability is at least three, three quarters to, three, to the three. But in general, if we can take Which is all a lot of- Which is smaller than, than one half. Which is, I guess, smaller than one half. Yeah. So if we have two, uh, that's nine nine sixteenth, 
which is bigger than one half, but not much bigger. So the third one will destroy the one half. Yeah. So this would be smaller than one half, right? So for example, let, okay, let's think about rho equals one half. So if we can choose three destroy, variable destroying clauses, then we know the answer. Okay, but what if not? So it means that, well, maybe I can take two variable disjoint clauses, but then any other clause has a common variable uh, with one of the, either has X, Y, Z, or T, every other clause. Yeah, and then so, the, the, the cut parts which are cut are somehow interrelated, linked to each other and, and in a not clear way. So we need to understand this somehow better, yeah. Yeah, so all the other, let me just draw, like, uh, then all the other clauses are, for example, like that. So one should have, let's say, Z, the other should have X. But then I'm saying that I can exactly calculate the number of satisfying assignments in this case. So, I don't know, maybe somebody see why. So let me stress again. So now I have two variable disjoint variables, let's say, but then I cannot take the third one because every clause has uh, one of these four variables from these two clauses. Sasha, there are, there are 16 ways to choose assignment to this two clauses and for each such way we can calculate exactly how many assignments as the remaining variables to despite all the remaining clauses right because yeah but yes because uh, when we know these values then in each clause either we know the remaining clause either we know that it is true or we just can uh, replace it by single variable uh, and the remaining formula just becomes a conjunction of variables uh, and we know that there is only one assignment that is finding right yeah well maybe like this is a power uh, two to the number of variables that are not in this uh, conjunction so what you are saying that if we have a, not three CNF and not two CNF, but one CNF, uh, then we can compute the probability easily. Right. And if we fix some values for X, Y, Z, and T, and uh, all the rest become one CNF. So we know in this, in this part of yeah. the space, we can compute the probability easily. Yeah. 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 And then, okay, for any row, just the same, but uh, we will have to choose a sufficiently large number. So what we do, we, we take any maximal in terms of inclusion variable destroying set of clauses. If it's sufficiently big, you know, sufficiently big to kill row in the sense that three quarters to the number of this is less than row, then we say that no. And if the maximal variable disjoint set of clauses is small, so it's some constant, but some constant, right? Depending on row, then we do the same. We consider all assi uh, assignments to variables in these clauses, and then we exactly compute the number of satisfying assignments to two CNN. Okay, so now you have proved what. Say, say it again say. because I am lost what you are doing. The theorem for case k equals four. Uh, and also, I would like to remark all row. in this case, the smaller row is, the larger the time running time is, right? Yes. Not exactly row, but denominator of row. I think it's no. what row is. 
not, not the denominator. Of well, we uh, yeah, the time is that. Uh, okay, yeah, can... yeah, Kola, I agree. You are right. Yeah, yeah. If we need like this, choose C. Uh, like if the number, if we choose a C variable disjoint set of clauses. C variable disjoint clauses, then the C has to be in our algorithm has to be in such a way that three quarters to the C smaller than row. So the smaller row is the larger is C. Well, and this reflects the fact that if you remember that you know this free sat was a uh, problem for free sat was it, it complete when the row was of the form two to the minus n. So it was small, and it, in this case, when it's very small, then it's indeed uh you know no but it, it it was for three sat now we are still yeah. two sats so maybe for two yeah sats. so now it's still for, for two but still you know this the thing that is the smaller is the harder is it's kind of the same intuition hold yeah okay so let's now normally it, it's quite easy to to decrease the probability by adding new clauses with new variables so if you yes. can do something with small probability it probably small threshold we can do also the bigger threshold but uh what i want to say that if we try to apply uh the same argument for k equal three it would be nice to be be able to compute the exact number of satisfying assignment for two cnfs then we can do the same but it that's impossible this is yeah this is some impossible because it should be it, it, it's it a sharp p complete problem. Ah. Yeah. So I, and this is an easy is result, or this is something which use PCP or what? No, it, it is obtained I think by it's some tedious reductions. Sharp p completeness. I should follow from the the number of matchings, I guess. Yes, yes, uh, number of matches, and then uh, you need to some um, gadget construction to convert it to um, uh, to CNF. Uh, this gadget construction is not very easy. I, I forget it. Uh, I forgot it several times, and now I, I don't remember it. But I guess it's easy to show you know the number of matchings that that it's sharply complete then yeah. i guess the reduction well okay number of matches is, is more or less uh, the, the first sharply complete problem it, it's a permanent yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah permanent it's but... strangely difficult to show that it's sharply complete there is no natural reduction something implicated yeah yeah, yeah I mean. it's not uh, not so non-natural if you consider uh, np completeness proof for say uh, three coloring for planar graphs uh, you will see uh, a very strange gadget yeah. you say that the other proofs are even worse let's say i agree completely okay yeah uh, so we, we will so you okay, need some so other argument for k equal three what can we do for k equal three yes so i i would start with the case so again increasing complexity so the, the most simple case is when k is equal three and rho is greater than one half so so i want to start explaining this case uh Okay, so what we do, we again, we choose uh, again maximal variable disjoint set of clauses. So now every close deletes one eighth of this, of the space. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, so if it's sufficiently large, I guess again, I don't know, okay, 10. If if this if its size 
is at least 10. Then we know that the answer is no, right? Because then the probability is at most seven eights to the 10. And I guess this is smaller than one half. Then, so if we could choose a 10 variable disjoint set of closes, uh, variable disjoint closes, then we already know that the satisfying probability is too small. So now we again consider the case where we choose, I don't know, nine variable disjoint closes, and then we again use uh, this observation that other closes intersect this line. Yeah, so here we, of, we, we don't, it's not really important that we have the threshold one half. If we have, I did not know, one third, we will also, we can also have just bigger number of closes. So we, we don't. Yeah, yeah, but okay, it will become important later. It, it wasn't important, uh, it no. haven't been important yet. No. Okay. So now we have this nine variable disjoint closes. And now we can do what? So they have some, I don't know, it must, so they have 27 variables involving sitting there. So we consider all possible assignments to these variables that are in this nine variable disjoint closes. So there is a finite number of cases, nine, namely two to the power 27. And yeah, so we have, for now, every two to, to the 27 assignments, we consider the, the following partial assignment and it gives us two CNF, right? Because yeah. so again, we need to take the area average of all these two CN, CNF uh, probabilities with some precision enough to say whether it's greater than rho or smaller than rho. What? No, so, so now what we really need, we have a finitely many two CNFs. If we are we wanted to compare the the, the, the average of their probabilities uh, compared to rho. Yeah. No. That won't work. No, no. We I didn't know how to do it, but it's just a formulation of what we need to do. So our probabilities is the average of the average probabilities for ah, the yeah, 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 okay. So and then the problem I just so want to, we... to understand better the problem. So we have several two CNF uh, probabilities, and the question is whether the average or their sum is bigger than something fixed. Yes. Which is quite so again if we could compute uh, if we could compute the uh, you know this probabilities for all of these two CNFs. You would be happy. Yeah, but then you explained me that this is P, this shall be complete. So yeah, so we have to do something else. But remember our algorithm, what it did for two CNFs. So again, for two CNFs, for every we take the maximum variable disjoint set of clauses. Yeah. And remember that if it maximum was small, with respect to inclusion, yes, no, not uh, inclusion, maximum. yes, so that you cannot take a another clause that is variable disjoint with that. Yeah. So and remember that if it if it was small, then we could compute the number of satisfying assignments exactly. Right, so because we, if it was full, we also considered all uh, assignments to variables from this variable disjoint set of clauses, and then compute exactly because we are left with one CNFs. This means that if so, we have this two to the twenty-seven two, two CNFs. Yeah, and if all these maximum sets are small for all of them, then we can compute exactly this the, the satisfying probability for our initial free CNF. And then we are happy. 
So they are, they should be small. They should be smaller than two to the to the power twenty seven. So so. Or or, what? or or what? No, just smaller than some threshold. Oh, be, ah, because we take the average. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what do we do if one of them is large? So if one of them is large. So just let me check that so I understand correctly. There are three cases somehow. Maybe, maybe they are all small, and then we know that the average is also small. No, we just know exactly the error. Hey, so, so, so the, 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 the probabilities are small, and, 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 and clo there are many clauses for each case, and the probabilities are small. Then we know that the average is small. And an and opposite case. Which case you consider? So we have different t two C and four. We argue. We argue in a different way. We consider in each CNF the maximal uh, number of disjoint clauses. Yeah. Okay. And so imagine that all these maximums are large. Then all probabilities are small. And no, no, ever... no. We, we, we haven't argued like that yet. Sasha, if the, you're saying that if the maximal set of variable disjoint clauses is small, then the probability is small. No, 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 no. The, the, no. If, okay. if, if there are many disjoint clauses in every case, then probabilities are small and we know that the average is small. And this is good. If there are only few, uh, few disjoint, uh, disjoint things, then we can come in this maximum. Then we can compute the probability exactly. And the difficult yes. case, if in some we have big things and in other we have small things, and so we need we cannot com uh, compute exactly some of them, but still others can shift the, and, and put it in the problematic region. Something mm -hmm. like this. Yeah? Right. Yeah, so the hard case is well, uh, then there is a two CNF where this maximum set is large. But then we will argue that indeed the overall probability of our three CNF is small. So why is that? So we have some two CNF uh, which has a large uh, variable disjoint set of clauses. But remember how they were obtained. So we took some assignments of these 27 variables, and then we, we just, you know, uh, fixed them in this way and obtained our two CNF. Okay, but more specifically, we know that, so all this, you know, this- So you are now variable, explaining what? Say it again, I'm lost. So I'm considering the case when there exists a 2CNF where we have a large maximal variable disjoints a set of closed. Ah, so there, there is a case when we when, when we cannot compute things exactly, but 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 the probability yeah. is small. Yeah. But we will show that in this case the probability is small for our initial free CNF, smaller than one half. Okay. So the point is that we have this maximum variable disjoint set for some of these two CNFs, but we know that these clauses are actually are coming from the clauses of our initial free CNF. More specifically, for every this clause, there exists some clause in the initial. It comes from some clause of the initial free CNF. With, with the addition of the extra variable, which is one of these 27 variables, maybe with some negations and so on. So in our initial CNF, these clauses are of the form where th this are, to, you know, where every, we uh, to every of the clause, we just add one of these 27 variables. Yeah, okay? so you say that these clauses do not appear out of nowhere. 
and they just yeah. appear, are obtained from the clauses of our initial CCNF when one variable is fixed makes one of them uh, literals false and then we get the yes this junction of two remaining ones and so in our original original three cnf there are many clauses which give different different uh, uh disjoint two 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 uh clauses after fixing some after fixing. yes but what does it mean so okay there are like a lot of clauses like this so they are variable disjoint, except that each of them also has one of the 27 variables. But this means that if, you know, we take this threshold on the number of the maximum variable disjoint sets sufficiently large, then it means that in our initial CNF, there will be a set of a large set of clauses of the form where we have one of these 20. So, okay, so I take, what uh, so I have this 27 variables. I take one which appears in most of these clauses that are here. And then I, I obtain a lot of uh, clauses of the form where I, where I have this variable, one of the 27 variables, and then everything is variable disjoint. something like that and so on no and no, this would be just a certain can you say slowly again i am lost so we have many clauses in in two cn is in resulting two cnf which contains uh, uh these joint variables and then you say something say it again slowly so uh sasha yeah we assume that there are many Mm, variable disjoint clauses after removal of some variables and uh, the number of removed variables is constant is 27 yeah and that means that uh, one uh, that there are many such clauses that uh, share the same literal which was removed uh, call it l so sasha has uh, written that L appears in all these clauses before removal. Then but we have a problem. If L equals uh, to one, then oh, wow. this C shortened C CNF is one also. So the probability is uh, greater than one half. But uh, say, the, but, but what I don't understand. So if if we have if we if we look. Uh, what what literal was removed? The, you say that there are many many clauses when the same literal was removed. Yeah. Yes. But still, yes. you but... have L, and sometimes you have not L for why for some reason. Yeah. No, 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 no. In your the same literal in the same form. There exists a literal which appears in many clauses. That was removed from many clauses. So the probability that this this part of the initial formula is satisfied is one half times a very small value. One half comes from the probability that uh, one half uh, sorry one half plus some small value, right? Yes, one half plus some small value, but it is greater than one half. Yeah, but it's smaller than rho if rho is greater than one half. <laughs> the, the trick is that rho is stricter than one half. I so, see. Rho, rho is strictly greater than one half. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I still so, don't yeah, understand so, your notation, but but it seems that the what are this L1, L1, L2, and U, and LI, LI plus one? I, I, but maybe it's, I, it, it, the argument seems to be clear, but the notation is confusing. Forget about the notation. Yes. 
No, okay, maybe maybe I missed something important, but okay. No, no, no. There is no nothing important here, I guess. So so we, we just use the fact that rho is strictly greater than one half. And yeah. Yes. And, and, and so if so what you say, let, let me check that I understand correctly. You say that if one of the CNF has many clauses which makes it difficult to compute the exact probability, many independent clauses, which makes difficult to compute the exact probability. This implies yes. that probability for the original formula is has a bound uh, like one half plus something very small, and so it's smaller than rho, and we don't care about what it is. Yes, That's you are saying. Yeah. But now, okay, yeah. if it's clear, then let's try to quickly deal with the case. Yeah, when Roy is exactly let, let, let's ask someone who maybe someone can confirm that's clear. Is there anyone who understands this argument? Uh, I guess I have. Yeah, yeah, but you already, you already claimed this. <laughs> yeah, so, so you are not, not a fresh one. No, I mean, I think it's pretty fresh. Okay, what, 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 I don't know. Just there are so, so many people and nobody confirmed this. Uh, it's strange. Maybe there are some questions or what? Ask somebody. People, people are lost. Yeah, I confirm that I lost, but but, but ignore me. It's, it's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I don't know, uh, Georgi, maybe you can say something uh, to, to encourage Sasha to continue or, or not. Or somebody else can save them. I more or less understand what's happening, but uh, I've looked up the article. Yeah, and and what? So I've <laughs> I've looked at the beginning side and uh, understand what's happening now. Okay, so, so you are not a, a representative example. Okay, but Andrei was lost, but maybe I don't know. No, it's a pity, of course, but okay. Let, let, no, if, if nobody asks anything, but but then let's continue. Yeah, okay. But, so now I want to explain what to do in the case where our rho is exactly one half. So you see the problem okay. is that exactly one half. The proof, exactly one half. So the only problem here is that, okay, so we do the same, right? So we First, uh, the problem is in the case when we obtain this large family, a large set of clauses where there is one literal appearing in all of the clauses and all the other variables in these clauses are disjoint. The problem is that this such a thing is, there is, it, it's, it's one with probability at least one half. Okay, so the idea, so how to, what we will do in that case. So th this is the only thing in this, in this no. algorithm that we have. Yeah, so. Are you going so to imagine, choose two literals? Okay. What? Uh, are you, you going to choose, to choose two literals of this form? Uh, in, the, in, the, in the first case, you choose one literal and obtain a probability one half plus small. If you choose two literals, it might be that uh, so probability to... became one fourth plus small, not? I mean, 
mean, I guess this would work if you can choose, like, to, uh, but the, the problem is that what if, uh, like, all of this, uh, all of these guys here, they they all have the same common literal yeah it, it's a problem uh, i see so the way we can solve it is as follows so okay so imagine we we obtain a large set of uh, clauses like this so they have a common literal l and everything else is disjoint But let's look at the other clauses. So if they if all the other clauses also have L, right? Then the initial three CNF is satisfied with probability with one half. Right. Actually, no. We have twenty-seven variables, and uh, this is for uh, no. We, I mean, we, I'm just we, we should uh, satisfy I'm, I'm, all, all these nine uh, clauses. No, no, no. I mean, what I'm saying is that so we have a, a set of variables uh, clauses like that. And I'm now looking back at my three CNF. If all clauses of this three CNF, regard, regardless of this time clause, like all clauses, hey, Sarah. Then, the, then the satisfaction probability is at least one half because we can satisfy all them by. Yeah, sorry, there is some noise. Uh, may, 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 maybe. Uh, From whom? It's, 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 uh, if we have uh, an ad, uh, admin, that, then uh, possibly we can just temporarily uh, mute. Uh, and ad admin uh, who? So somebody, uh, uh, not not me. But you should okay. be you should be from 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 University of Bardotto. Okay. Let's... I mean, I can log in as, as admin, I guess, but I don't understand whom to mute. <laughs> Okay, okay. So, just you, mute please, please, everyone so, except, except for the speaker, and then uh, people can uh, <laughs> unmute themselves. <laughs> just to try. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So we, we, we yeah. consider the case when it is exactly one half. And you claim that you can yeah. do something in this case, and this I don't understand completely. So we take one of this. Uh, so, uh, like the first sentence, is that we do the same thing, exactly the same thing as in the previous case. We first choose the maximum variable disjoint set of clauses in our initial three CNF. If it's large, then we know that it's less than one half. Now, if it's small, then we, I don't know, if it's at, at most nine, then we know, so again, we take all these two CNFs that occur after assigning these 27 variables. Yeah. Right? And, and so if- has unrelated to each other. So the number of clauses, independent clauses in, in one can be large and in other small, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So what, again, if it's small for all two CNFs, then we can compute exactly. Yeah. Right? So there are at least so one the problem, for, which is, for which is large. Yeah. Then again, we conclude that, then we that we can choose a large set of clauses of the form that I have here. So where I have one common literal and all the other variables are and, uh, 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 like um, um, ex ex uh, except this one literal, all the other literals are disjoint. All the other, uh, all, all the clauses are disjoint. So they, this okay. is like, this is. So in this so case, they have you have one half and but then, something very small. Okay, and yeah, so from that we we deduce that the probability satisfaction probability is one half plus very small, but it's not enough for us now. So we have to do something else. 
Yeah. So now I'm explaining what's new we do. Yeah. So first, we just look. So let's consider all the other clauses of our free CNF. If let's assume that they all have L, then we are done. Because if not, I will what I will do, I will just look, choose some other clause which doesn't have L, and I will show now that the probability is smaller than one half. But if all the clauses have L, then the probability is at least one half. Right. Because we can satisfy it by choosing just L uh, equals to one. Ah, so if there is if there is a clause which is doesn't contain L, then then what? One then one. in case so there's some clause U V W I guess. Yeah. So in case when L is zero, the probability the satisfying probability Valentino put you're not muted. No. Yes, I am Ah, okay. So now we uh so when L is zero, the probability is small at most three quarters to the n, right? Yeah, uh, but when L is one, we still have to satisfy this clause. Then the probability is at most seven eighths. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, it may be that this clause has like two variables or maybe one variable, but the maximal probability is when there are three variables, then it's seven over eight. But in any case, it will be one half times something small plus one half seven quarters. Yeah, and so there is a, there is a a margin which which will make it smaller than one half. Yeah. So this is the case of row equals one half. Okay, so it seems that you use more and more complicated tricks, and what we we are already afraid of what will happen with case p smaller than one half. Not to speak about k is equal uh, four, but okay. But let's let's at least uh, try to to consider case p is smaller than one half. Yeah. So indeed, now there will be something scary. Uh, <laughs> so let me try to do this. Yeah. So so we have now. What we do, we have now initial free CNF. And again, we do the same thing. So we first choose the maximal variable disjoint set of clauses. Okay, and then I have to do something when it's large and when it's big. So when it's large, I want to say that the probability, so I don't know, let's say I choose. And so there will be some threshold. So if it's large, I will say that the probability is already less than rho. Yeah, still, in, this is the first part when we didn't use the exact value of rho. If we can, if there is a large set, then it's smaller than rho and we are done. Yeah, so, so more specifically, I have to, like my threshold on the number of these guys should be in such a way that seven quarters to the A is less than rho. So if I could choose a variable disjoint guys, then this is yeah, seven quarters to yeah, the a. Seven eighth, just you want to say. Yeah, what I was yeah, saying, yeah, seven yeah. eighth. Seven eighth, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and if it's small, then I do the same thing. So I consider like, okay, it's so two to the three over a assignments. As before, well, okay, there are like there are three a variables in these guys, then and then I obtain three to the two to the three of a's two CNFs. Yeah, which is not better than itself because it's still a constant, even if this constant is very large, then it, it, it doesn't 
Yeah. And then, uh, again, I take maximum weight of disjoint sets there. Uh, if it's small, in all of them, I can compute probability. Then I'm happy. If ever a 2CNF, which we get, has small, small set of disjoint variables, then we can compute all the probabilities, take the average, and everything is okay. Yeah. Yeah, so now I have to explain what to do if if the in one of them the max the size uh, of the maximum set is large. Yeah, and there will be some threshold B. I don't know B again that I will have to choose somehow then. But it, this will be again some constant. So if I so I will have to do something different if I encounter at least B variable disjoint sets in one of these two CNFs. Yeah, so it yeah. may be several two CNFs which have large things, but you, you consider only one of them. Yeah, because it might be that there is only one, and then I will have to do something. Yeah, 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 but, but since you now need to compute probabilities, the, exist, the existence of two of them may complicate things, not simplify them, but okay. You consider yeah. one okay. of them, good. So again, I, and again, I'm, from that I conclude that there is a large set of this for a large set of clauses of the form where with a sunflower. Let me use this word again. So a sunflower, in the sense that there is a common variable, and every, all the other variables are disjoint, like that. Most, more specifically, like. How large will be this sunflower? So if I will obtain in some CNF B variable disjoint clauses, then they the all of these B clauses come from initial CNF. And all of them were obtained by removing one of the three A variables of these guys, right? So the size of this sunflower will be if I take like the lead uh, the variable which was. Maybe six Which a I... literals. You can use variable on negation of variable. Yeah, just to well, divide okay. by twice more. But actually, like when you fix doing assignment, so you fix some literal to one. So one assignment removes the close, and the other just removes the so it will be free a But six a I'm happy with six a if you want. Uh, Okay, B but, over uh, six A. Agree. B over six A, but actually the three A was also true. But okay, six A. Now what's the point? Now okay, so now we, the only thing we can say is that then the satisfying probability is uh, uh, one at most one half plus some, but this is not enough. So what we will do? So now I will consider, so I have my initial three CNF phi, and I will consider a three CNF phi one, which is just phi, and I set this literal to one. So this phi one has one less variable, but I'm claiming that still, uh the number of satisfying assignment in phi and phi one are closely related to are close to each other and then i will now consider phi one instead of phi and maybe i will have to do this several times but okay let's try to understand the idea what uh, how we can use that okay so now okay let's consider let's try to relate the number of satisfying assignments first phi one every satisfying assignment of phi one can be completed to a satisfying assignment of phi by setting l equals to one right so the number of satisfying assignment can only go down so here like the, by these brackets 
I mean the number of satisfying assignment, not the probability, but the number. Okay, but on the other hand, so every satisfying assignment of phi one is basically a satisfying assignment with L equals one of phi. But the point is that phi, if L equals zero, then there are just a small number of satisfying assignment to phi because you see that there is like, uh, if L equals zero, we obtain a large uh, independent family of clauses. Sasha, I from that? Uh, Sasha, I don't understand the, uh, the, the first inequality. So um, phi, phi one is shorter than phi. So it yeah. seems phi one has more satisfying. Assignment. No, no, there is one variable is deleted. No, it's just, just trivial. We take phi and, and fix the variable L is equal to one and, and to zero. And then the, the number of assignments for phi is the sum of number assignments for phi one and phi zero. Phi zero. Uh, uh, but so it's not it probability, but the number. But wait, uh, what is phi? What do we do? Phi is our initial free CNF. But this formula... Ah, sorry, I see. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, so what we understood is that the number of satisfying assignments can only decrease, but it cannot increase too much because if L is zero, there are not so many satisfying assignments. So, so the, then I can write that. Phi is the sum of phi one plus phi zero, and phi zero is small because then, then we need to satisfy all this AI and BI and, and so on. Yeah. So we have this inequality. So if, ah, sorry, if the number is like two to the end, then I, 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 for some reason I want to, I guess, talk about the number. Yeah, okay. So the difference is small. So now uh, let's try to do the same, but for phi, phi one. So what we will start doing for phi one, first we take, we look whether there is a large set of uh, independent clauses in phi one. So imagine that it's large. So we, we encountered one, but it means that the, the satisfying probability of phi one is small, but then also this, like smaller than rho with some margin. But then it's also small for phi for our initial formula phi, because they, the difference between the number of satisfying assignments is small. Okay. So but if I in... am, I'm, I'm just about the plan. So you, you have now a, a formula phi one, which has one less variable, yes. but, but uh, for, for the number of assignments, you have some uh, precision, some error, which is a somehow fixed, fixed error, but um, non zero and still if, if you so so now it's not enough to, to compute phi one even exactly because maybe for phi uh this precision is not enough and we are close to the threshold so, but so okay i can what tell you, you doing so, then? yeah yeah okay so the point is that so there you say that even we compute if we compute phi one exactly then yeah. it's not enough yeah, but the point is that remember, in which case we compute the number of satisfying assignments exactly. So in the case when we have like all these two CNFs that we have, have small uh, number of um, the small independent set, then the number of their satisfying assignments can be computed by computing this one CNFs. But then this number of satisfying assignment is just the sum of the constant number of powers of two. And in this case, when we were able to compute the satisfying uh, satisfy probability of y, y, and exactly, we obtained that then this is the sum of the constant number of powers of two. And then it will give you some margin. If it's smaller than 
you know, raw. If you know that uh, th there is a statement, so if you have fixed the number of powers of two, and you can consider all the sums of these many powers of two, but they can be arbitrary. The statement is that if it's smaller than rho, then it's smaller than rho by some margin, which depends on rho and on the number of powers of two you have. Because because there are only fixed number of digits after the after the binary point, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and then. Uh, what you can do here, you can choose like this constant in the uh, for the for the phi, you know, of this a b these thresholds for phi in a way that then in phi one you you take new this threshold and they uh, determine the number of these powers of two that you get in this case when you can compute it exactly. But but now you are free to choose this a and b for phi as big as you want, so that you will beat this constant that appears from the power uh, fr from this argument with the sum of powers of two. But but now you consider the imaginary case when we can compute everything for phi one exactly. Yeah, but I'm using the fact that I can compute it exactly. Then uh, the, this uh, number of satisfying assignment has a specific simple form. And Which so this some... exactly value has a sim has a few digits after the point, yeah. Yeah, but uh, there is also the case when again, you know, in phi one I obtain a set of a set of clauses like that. Yeah. That I cannot compute it exactly. Remember, right? Yeah. And uh, then I. But then, these are already new sets. But then I again fix this, you know, the center of the sunflower to one, and I obtain some CNF phi two, which again has the number of satisfying assignment is close to phi one, phi one, and then to phi, and I do the same for phi two. Again, if I can compute its number of satisfying assignment exactly, I use the fact that uh it has a special form and then there is some margin but the question is that what if i continue like that like if i always obtain a, a sunflower like that yeah for, for, for a long time but, not not bound yeah yeah but if i do this for a long time it means that i obtain a lot of uh, a lot of sunflowers with disjoint variables in the center. So, like, so because each time I obtain a sunflower and then I set a, the corresponding literal to one, and then like the center of the new sub, sub, uh, sunflower will be some other variable so i obtain like some something like that for many variables and then i claim that the probability is small to satisfy all the sunflowers because if we set the probability there is a small probability that all these literals will be one like two to the minus the number of sunflowers we get. But if at least one of them is zero, then there is a small probability to satisfy, you know, these uh, leaves of the sunflower. So in any case, if we have a lot of sunflowers with disjoint variables in the center, this gives us like an indication that the probability is small. It means that, you know, we have to do this um, fixations just a constant number of times. And this, I mean, that finishes the argument and, for all smaller than one half. Sorry? And this finishes the argument for
for a constant row smaller than one half. That's what you're saying. Or there is well, something still I mean, missing. Right. This is the end of the proof. And you understand the proof? <laughs> Not exactly, but I think that uh, I could. No, we, we believe I completely you don't you. understand <clears throat> this thing about granularity. As Sasha uh, said, uh, in interesting case, uh, <clears throat> the number of satisfying assignments should be um, a fraction of satisfying assignments should, should have small denominator. I, I don't understand why. Because in that case, it was the sum of two to the minus something times two to the minus something. Well, okay, because uh, Shane said some proof of this fact that I want to show, which is not uh, exact. So I, I only know that there are, like, my fraction is the sum of sum of small number of powers of two, but they actually can be like two to the minus small, but still, like if I just fix the number of summons, I say that if it's smaller than rho, then it's smaller than rho by some margin. And I have to show this somehow. Right. Yes, but, but, but this margin may be very small. But it, I'm saying that it's just a function on the rho, which is fixed in our case. And then the number of, uh, these powers of two that I get. And these are also constants. Yes, uh, and it's exactly the thing that I don't understand, but <laughs> let's stop discussion. But no, no, no. The, the point is that, for example, so the, the number of these powers of two is what can, um, bothers you, right? The point is that the number of powers of two you get from phi one, depends on the thresholds on this number of independent cents that you choose in phi one yes but and in order and it gives you some march but the precision like with which the number of satisfying assignments to phi one is equal to the number of satisfying assignments to phi this precision depends on the threshold in that you choose in phi. It means that the margin you get from phi one, you can kill it by choosing sufficiently large thresholds in phi. And then the margins you get in phi two, you can kill it by choosing sufficiently large margins in phi one and so on. And so this gives you like the free, uh, the, 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 this explains why you can choose all the these constants so that everything will work. And yes, the but last I, step, I, I cannot understand it. Maybe I just need to look at, at formulas because uh, it, it seems that it's some quantitative uh, relation and we should be careful with this uh, hand waving. And uh, yeah, yeah, yes, no, I believe a, that things should be chosen so in some order. We choose something. Uh, and then something, and then this B, and then A, and and whatever. But yes, but but yeah, but yeah. It, 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 we have conditions say, in different directions. We, no, we have them in one direction. Hopefully. Why in so, one direction? When you choose a threshold uh, too large uh, in phi one, you have a problem. We should somehow balance this uh, choice. Uh, no, no, if I choose this A and B's for phi one, sufficiently large, too large, it gives me some very, 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 very tiny margin, but I can kill it by choosing A and B large in phi. And now for phi, you see for phi, there is no problem with margins because phi exactly equals the number of satisfying assignment, well, it's a, a, my initial formula, then I don't have to care about phi. So I use, choose A and B, so these thresholds for phi, that large that they will give margins in phi one. 
And okay, well, 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 let's stop. I don't understand the argument of this sort because uh, I don't understand how to um, substitute uh, exact calculations by this hand waving. Okay. Mm. No, I think it's possible to convince you, but. No, no, you, yes, you of cannot. course. I, I I can look at formulas. It's, it's and, violation uh, they of the rights of people of being not convinced. So you cannot uh, forcefully convince someone. Uh, <laughs> okay, but in any way, what is clear somehow that uh, some it's there is nothing very very high level. Uh, it, it's kind of sm small small uh, small remarks, and uh, not not something. Uh, we don't use any any big theory. Do something just kind of case analysis for this and that, and 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 get some polynomial of extremely high degree, which uh, uh, may be fixed but so large that that nobody wants to to, to deal with it. Yes, and probably even more complicated things happen for uh, uh, for CNF. <laughs> I'm afraid. Yes, rightfully so. so do you understand the, the proof of for CNF or not? No. If this uh, I mean, with, I, uh, I understood the case it gave... works, it, it would work for, for all cases. It, it, it's a general trick. No, this is not not not. Oh, it was so easy for 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 k is equal to and and more complicated for k equal three not not be, because we knew essentially new tricks maybe the same will happen for bigger k i don't know actually not the only thing uh, we do new in the case uh, k equals three is uh, this uh, uh, sequence of uh, cnfs substituted by uh, values of some literals and uh this argument then uh having uh close enough bounds for number of satisfying assignments we can decide whether the uh fraction of satisfying assignments of the uh, first cnf uh, greater or not uh, of the threshold row if it's true, it should work for any K, yeah. I think. So, uh, Sasha, Misha claims that if you understand the proof for K is equal to 3, then you should understand the proof for arbitrary K. And I'm a living contract. No, no. <laughs> or in, 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 you can also pose it in different ways. So if you don't understand k equals to four understand something okay. simplifying in this uh, case yeah well i mean the problem um the problem is that in case for two cnfs if you weren't able to compute it exactly there was something like a, a large independent set of clauses here uh here we the, when we cannot compute it exactly for free cnfs we have not a large family of independent clauses but a large family of sunflowers for example like in this last case when we did a lot of steps and we obtained a lot of uh sunflowers centered at different variables so this can be one of the cases when we cannot compute three CNF exactly. So we have to do something with this sunflowers. We have to then lift it to four CNF initial and do some arguments. Maybe, yeah, so like, but general idea is that I guess, so then we, we have to do something with this sunflower. So then we obtain in our initial four CNF is understand we be, obtain like a sunflower where we have not one variable but two variables like one of which was fixed from you know this larger for, for cnf and then we do something so it's not like you not, like 
And that's what uh, exactly, uh, this is, so they do this stuff, some stuff with these sunflowers that I don't completely understand, but, and they call it sunflowers, but now they have to deal with the cases where this is not just one variable in the intersection, but many variables, and then everything else is disjoint. Well, yeah, so that's why we have to say something for, for CNF and create that. Yeah. Okay. So I, I I think that, but it seems that the, 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 uh, so 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 what 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 was the uh, what what is the the, the, the the lesson we should learn? Just just that this problem is is is, is in P for some uh, uh, kind no philosophical reason and no nothing uh, very very technical. Just somehow it happens that you can. Uh, compute this with, with at least for for three CNF. Maybe, maybe for four CNF we need some combinatorial lemmas or what? Yeah, we need. Well, there will also some the pigeonhole principle or something. Yeah. No, 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 but maybe you need some kind of quite involved technique. And does it imply some consequences? Uh, does it have some consequences for for other? M maybe something is also in P, in in P because of this. Something is reducible to this, and therefore this is also in in P. In in P. Let me think. So, is it important that I have clauses that are? Well, I mean, I guess this is all like constraint satisfaction, right? Or any constraints, bounded constraints, this whole stuff, right? Because you can write any constraint as a CNF. So you have constraint satisfaction of, with, with arbitrary okay. finite sets of, of fixed size. Yeah? Yes. Then you can just turn it into a free CNF. Um, I mean, the CNF of the corresponding size, like the length of the closes, and then you run this algorithm. But then, then the threshold, uh, it, it still is a constant after reduction or not? But but the threshold doesn't change because it's just the same function. We just the same Boolean function, but no, no. If you reproduce the colors by by by, by Boolean variables, there are some unused combination of Boolean variables. So how, how how do you how do you keep the same function, the same probability? Well, my understanding is that. So every constraint is a, like, so it's a conjunction of some Boolean functions. Each Boolean function involves at most k variables. No, but so the, what I- there are, there are three colors for some, some, some very vertex. And then we have something with, with, with denominator three, how you reduce it to, to something with denominator two. Three colors, what? No, so, so constraints are for, for uh, 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 s s s variables with finitely many values. Ah, you so imagine we have three values. Just somehow you had three in the denominator. It's just a stupid thing I'm saying, but yeah, yeah, I understood that it's not only boolean, right? Uh, let me check. Mm, maybe you can do something stupid like spam a lot of conditions ah no it will not be constant sorry okay they say that it immediately extends to boolean csps so yeah when the variables are boolean
Ah, you know, Boolean uh, CSP is, is, is no different from, 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 from CNF, I guess. What is the difference then? If we just forbid some combination of Boolean variables, exactly CNF, what, what is the difference then? Again, what? Uh, so we have Boolean C, uh, CSP. So uh, variables are I think Boolean. CSP is that some, some combinations of values or variables are, are forbidden, yeah? What is CSP? That you cannot I mean, have this value of this variable. For, fi for finitely many variables. Yeah, each uh, involves finitely many variables. So we just uh, replace every constraint with they, uh, we ah, take yeah. Uh, three, yeah, yeah. that computes it. Yeah, yeah. Then it's then it's clear. almost obvious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, then okay. So they give some that some problems can be solved uh, faster. Okay, what they also say that uh, there is a strange situation again, you can consider like the problem whether uh, the, the number of satisfying assignment is greater than one, is strictly greater than half. And it makes a difference. So, but they say that for free CNF, for, for, for free CNF it's still in P, in polynomial time, I mean. Yeah. And ba basic, yeah. But for four CNF, it's for some reason it's in P complete. So it's not PP complete. It's not polynomial time, but it's NP complete. Well, yeah, so for. No, this is not how it can be. No. Constra you mean what is PP complete? Say again. NP complete. The problem, yeah. uh, whether the number of satisfying assignment is strictly larger than half of all the of, of is strictly larger than for, for which kind of for four CNF. It's NP complete. Okay, but, but then I am lost. So you said that that you that is originally that this is true for all k. Uh, no, yes. the, the difference is is the whether the inequality is strict or not. Oh God! So, so there is difference between strict. We can say that the problem whether the number of satisfying assignment is at least two to the n minus one, so half, at least half. And the other problem is whether this is strictly larger than half. And one is complete and the other is not. Yeah, one is polynomial. And you, and yeah, the other one is polynomial and other is NP complete. And, and the other for some reason is NP complete, not PP complete. Yeah, yeah, but still, still probably not polynomial. Yeah, but it's not it's not clear why it's in P, for it. Yeah. What would be certificate? There is no like you then there is you know how would you show? No, it's not obvious that it's in P. In NP. So there's something strange happening. Yeah. So there are some subtleties and all this stuff. So so, so it's not NP complete, it's NP hard. Or, or it's np complete it belongs well i mean who is np complete then say it again who is np complete i am lost so uh, the problem greater than for free sat greater than one half of free sat when you want to know whether the number of satisfying assignments but is strictly why, larger than why it is a fraction of
so what why is this problem is in, is, is in np if if you say it's np complete you so this uh, it is this an... requires an argument so it's not easy to see oh so it's even it, it somehow is np in np but not uh, it's not obvious yeah well, I mean, you, I guess you have to do the same algorithm more or less, but wow, there are some, some observations like that that we have been doing there, but okay. So probably the last question. So what is your impression? It's some uh, thing which, which a technical technical remark which can be a part of some uh, uh, big uh, uh, change in, in, in the picture, or it's just, uh, it was open for a long time and now it will have a lot of consequences, or, or it's just some, some question which was not solved, but now it's solved, but nothing uh, really follows from this. Well, it's difficult to say, of course, but, but what is your general impression? Uh... So there are some problems that some obscure problems for which it might change something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but generally not too much, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so any, any other comments? Uh, for example, of that sort that like, can you fix like some variables to one so that in the end the number of uh, the, the satisfaction probability is at least one half for example or, or you want to fix a small can as fix the remaining variables and get it one this probability so but if the very well i mean i want to fix it Okay, for example, I have a formula on which such that on, on the vector of all ones, it's equal to one. And then I want to find a small number of for, uh, variables such that I can fix it to one and still the probability that if I even choose, choose all the remaining variables at random, it will be uh, high probability the formula will be one. So it's kind of if I have an input on which the, the formula is equal to one, you know, if I have some simple set of variables, small set of variables. Small, small set of variables, which would I, guarantee high probability. Yeah, so it's kind of a reason, like, uh, why the formula classifies our input as it does. So, mm -hmm. There are people that were considering this in context of machine learning and everything. So, complexity of these problems. So, uh, so this result somehow is related to it and it, it's not clear whether something which can be like polynomial time can be obtained also with some restrictions to that other problems. From machine learning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so if there are no other remarks, uh, next time we will probably have a, a talk of Maxim Babenka. I have a preliminary confirmation about what he did in Yandex for the for the infrastructure of core map and reduce things, and he. I hope he will explain everything uh, for dummies, so uh, we can. Uh, understand something and uh, also uh, there is a, an announcement about a talk of, of Sasha uh, uh, on, on this next this will be this this uh, which day it will be exactly which talk you will give Maybe a talk I with... know oh, it's Valodia's talk with you somehow or I didn't know it's on a joint work with me but he's gonna make it all
<laughs> okay, <laughs> at least you believe so right now. Good. But it will happen this uh, Thursday. Wednesday. Ah, Thursday, right. Thursday, yeah. April 20th, they, they write. Yeah. Okay, I will just forward this 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 thing to 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 the list, and so you will see. But it's 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 Thursday eight uh, uh, um, eight ten Moscow time, which is seven uh, which is eight, no, not eighteen eighteen ten Moscow time, which is seventeen ten uh, European time. Yes. Okay. Any any other comments and remarks or or whatever. If not, we can, we can stop. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. you. No, we should thank the speaker, but since Sasha is always the speaker, it's not doesn't make much sense to thank it every time. <laughs> but but yeah, I don't know if I should thank this time. I guess I was somehow not not so clear. No, 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 no. It, 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 Sasha, it, thank you for your talk. It, it could be much worse. So don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's interesting result. Uh, no, 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 no. Re, 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 re. Uh, remarks and uh, warnings about significance of this result. It's just interesting. No, no, it's interesting. Yeah, of course. But uh, and also okay. we we are still hoping to hear something about this strange win now thing and Kolmogorov complexity. Uh, if it's, I know the abuse of your uh, patience, but but uh, to, to at least. To 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 um, express this. No, no, it's like very weird stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Right. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. Any other Bye. people, if they want to give a talk, just write or, ah, yeah. or say something. Yeah. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.